Artists. Now the art here again with another speed art. Today we're taking a look at my one of my mermaid pieces again. Um, this time I mermaidified uh, Nezuko from Demon Slayer or Kimitsu no Yaiba. Um, so I thought today I could tell some facts about Demon Slayer, maybe some mermaid facts that I didn't get to cover last time. We'll kind of see where this goes. Um, but first, let's talk about Demon Slayer. Um, if you haven't noticed on my Instagram page, I love Nezuko so much. Um, we watched, my husband and I, watched Demon Slayer before we went to Japan. And we had come to realize when we got to Japan how big Demon Slayer got in the anime community. Like, if you go to Akihabara or Nakano Broadway, like, she sells high for, like, her statues. Because their statues and collectibles had just come out in Japan. So a lot of the stuff was selling for, like, hundreds of dollars. Um, the first collectible I got while I was in Japan, I would say if you can, go to Nakano Broadway. It's cheaper than Akihabara, and you can find some really cool exclusive, like, um, collectible stuff. So I got Zenitsu because any um, Nezuko pieces that I found were, like I said, hundreds of dollars and I was there was no way I was going to purchase that. Um, so I got um, a very cheap, I would say it was roughly like $20 um, in US dollars for my Zenitsu. Um, and so that kind of started my collection and then when we got back from Japan, uh, my husband bought me quite a few Nezuko statues. I have about four right now. I've got, I think, two more on the way, but sadly because of the Backstreet Boys uh, reunion tour, I won't get to see them probably until July, which is sad. But I am super excited to have them. So Nezuko, of course, is my favorite character. She's so cute. She's so sassy, so feisty, even though she doesn't talk. So, um, if you don't know what Demon Slayer is, um, it is about the story of Tanjiro um, Kamado, a Taisho era boy who lives in the mountains and sells charcoal to raise money for his family. So I think I had said previously, and I think my um, six fan art character challenge that um, this was set in the Edo period. Clearly I was wrong. Um, I, I thought it had hints of the Edo period, but I guess it's the Taisho. I probably should look more into that. Maybe we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, he sells charcoal to raise money for his family. His peaceful life is disrupted when demons attack his family in the middle of the night while he's on a selling run in the town at the foot of the mountain. So he lives with his mom, um, a few sisters and brothers. Um, Nezuko, I think, is like the second oldest. I believe, if I remember correctly, um, out of the family, and she survives, but she survives because she has been turned into a demon. So the whole first season of the show is him trying to figure out how to get Nezuko to become a human. He then learns that he needs to become a demon slayer in order to do this, so he trains, and what I really like about this show is that the first season spans the two years and six months of of his time unlike other shows where there isn't it doesn't seem like there's a progression of time like each next episode comes right after the last episode so you don't really get a sense of like how long things have been um and that's what i really liked about demon slayer was it showed how much time has progressed and i thought that was really cool and so um, he kind of goes on this journey learning about demons and learning that his sister is very different demon than what others are. I'm trying not to give away too many spoilers. If you haven't watched it, I highly suggest watching it. I believe it's on Hulu if you have that. Um, you can always, you know, illegally watch it if you want to. I didn't tell you that. I didn't say anything. But if you want to, you can. Um, I... I know the dub for it came out, but we watched sub. There's some subs that are really good, 
and then there are some dubs that are better than the subs, at least for me. I can't name any off the top of my hand, head right now. Um, just believe me when I say um, I think you'll like the sub more than the dub because a lot of the, for the dub, there's a lot of new voice actors. Um, I know Johnny Young Bosch is in it and I was super excited, but then like they got all these new voice actors that don't really have any like background, which is fine. That's great. I'm so glad that your first thing will be Demon Slayers, but like when I heard it, I was like, this is not what I thought you would sound like in English. It doesn't have the same thing. And most of the time, especially with Funimation, they've been doing a really good job of trying to match up the same vocalization of the the subbed to the dubbed, and it works out really well. I think My Hero Academia does a really good job with this. Um, but anyway, so I highly suggest watching it. I will try not spoil anything, but I think let's let's talk about the Taisho era. Just you know, kind of for me and for you, if you want to learn a little bit more. So the article I'm looking at says the Taisho era is a period in the history of Japan dating from July 30th, 1912 to December 25th, 1926. So if you're thinking in terms of maybe like American history or US history, that would be around the, um, around the time of the First World War and the slow beginnings of the Second World War. Um, the, it coincides with the reign of Emperor Taisho. The new emperor was a sickly man which prompted the shift in political power from the old oligarch group of elder statesmen to the imperial diet of Japan and the democratic parties. Thus, the era is considered the time of the liberal movement known as the Taisho democracy in Japan. It is usually distinguished from the preceding chaotic Meiji period and the following militaristic driven first part of the Showa period. So that's um, interesting that they place it in that time. I guess it, it you do kind of see that in the show of the modernization. So I guess I only thought of it as the Edo period in the beginning when they're in the mountains and it had the very like um, the clothing behind it kind of the samurai look but now that i'm thinking about it especially when he gets to asakusa which is so cool if you ever get to go to japan asakusa is very much that mixture of old and new um when my husband and i went to japan for our honeymoon we stayed in asakusa i would say it's not probably the best place to stay um unless you're like a big guru on the culture and stuff um, because there's not a lot to do and it's really far away from like other things like it's a good place to stop for like a, a day trip if you want to go because you want to see the Meiji sh shrine and all of that stuff but um anyway we when the sh demon slayer show was in Asakusa I was like oh my gosh this is this is what it looks like this is what it kind of looks like like it showed where the the shrine was and um, kind of the, the stalls that it had. I was like, wow, it has not changed in um, like hundreds of years. So that's really cool. And to see kind of the, the changing of the style of Japanese fashion to more modern, like, um, like there's more business clothing, like not everyone's wearing yukatas and stuff like that. So it, we saw, Coming to realize there was that, that definite shift. I mean, uh, women were wearing yukatas more than men, um, but that's okay. Like, you started to see, like, the men wearing the style and suits of the 20s, the fedoras, and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I get I, that would totally make sense of this period that it is in for this. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about just a little bit of Nezuko. Again, I really don't want to be spoiled, but I also was spoiled when I was looking up facts because I have not read the manga. I've only watched the anime. I should probably read the manga because there's a berserker mode that she has. Spoilers. Spoiler alert right here. Um, she has a berserker mode, which we have kind of seen if you look at fan art. So she gets a horn. Um, she gets busty magoo for some reason like she come like i thought she was supposed to be i don't know 12 but somehow she turns to 16 maybe 18 years old in this 
and I'm like, whoa, what is happening here? Um, and so she um, gets all of like these scar tattoo looking stuff on her. Um, and I'm not quite sure what the berserker mode is for or when she gets it because we haven't quite seen it. We saw it when um, Tanjiro was fighting the spider um, guy in the forest. Uh, and we see the inklings of it of her demon art that she gets and that his kind of power like sword stuff changes as well into more fire and water so that was really interesting to see again the the beauty that we see in the show i'm sure is not the same as when we see it in the manga and i would love to read the manga as well because the anime is just gorgeous the art behind it is so beautiful and they try and keep it in that that older Japanese style like almost a woodblock print behind it and I really enjoy that kind of thing but we can we can take a look at some facts of Nezuko in uh let me just pull up my fact sheet right here all right so the Kamado family lives in the snowy mountains at the start of the series the name Nezuko has a deeper meaning and a strong connection to where her family is from in Japanese, the partial translation of her name is actually a flower, simply known as the snowball flower. Those flowers can be found in the winter, which is the season we mainly see during the series, so her name is pretty much related to the snowy mountains where the Kamado family lives. Flower-based names are typical in Japan, but it's perfect for this show to display where Nezuko came from. Nezuko's demon art, again, spoiler, allows her to use her blood as grenades where she can explode them to her will that harm any demon. Her power can also be used to increase the strength of a Nichirin blade, which is later shown in the manga. We see her use her ability on Tanjiro's sword, turning it from black into red. By doing this, it increases the energy of Tanjiro's fire sword techniques. It helps Tanjiro whenever he's in quite a bind against his foes. With both Nezuko's power and Tanjiro's, Tanjiro's sword skills, it's apparent that these two are a powerful duo together. Um, so this is a spoiler, big spoiler. Normal demons are like vampires where they can only roam in the night because the sunlight burns them to a crisp. Nezuko isn't like other demons, which is how she was given the name the Chosen Demon. The reason behind this is because unlike other demons, she can actually walk in the sunlight without getting burned, which has not been seen in the anime yet because she still hides in the box that Tanjiro has. So I'm assuming in the manga it is shown that she no longer has to worry about hiding in the, in the dark. Um, but this also explains why Muzan, the antagonist oh he's so good so creepy i want to know more about him which i'm sure you do in the anime or in the manga but right now he's still kind of a, a mystery which is fine um he wants to devour her in order to gain the ability to walk in the daylight muzan has been looking for centuries of a demon that can conquer the sunlight after muzan discovers nezuko's ability he decides to change his plans and pursue her for himself he believes that by devouring her muzan can also be able to walk freely into the sunlight um so yeah when i was looking up facts and i read that i was like oh my gosh why did i just spoil that for myself i can't believe i did that but i mean if it's in the manga it's not really a spoiler if i just read the manga i'm sure i would figure out that um so it'll be interesting to kind of look at the manga and see how far i do know that the author of the manga said that they were in the like final process of demon slayer so i'm not sure if like he knows how it's going to end or if it's going to end like not necessarily soon but within like a few years not lasting as long as like Bleach and One Piece and Naruto and stuff like that. It might be kind of a shorter um, piece, so but who knows? I do know there is a movie that is supposed to come out based upon. I'm assuming to go in between um, season one and season two because they just hopped on the train. Or is season two out? No, season one's yeah. So they hop on the train and then the movie's supposed to be them um, on the train. I don't know if it's out yet, 
I just know I've seen like there's trailers for it so I assume either A it is out or it's going to be out very soon. Um, to kind of finish up this video because I believe I have about four minutes left uh, before it ends. Um, I'm gonna talk about the tail. So I totally had to fix the tail. If you go to my Instagram account, I completely changed how it looked because right now it doesn't look that great. The, the length of the tail just doesn't work for the body and the proportions for it just didn't turn out correctly. So instead of recording um, how I did it because the program I use only lets me do like 15 minute segments and I didn't really want to stop and start behind it. So I just kind of went for it. I went to kind of push it so it looks like she was kneeling more. Um, you know how like uh, our calf leg goes up behind our thigh. So I wanted it to kind of look that way. Again, if you go to my Instagram account, you can see how I changed it. And I thank you for joining me today on this speed paint. Um, again, if you like these videos, let me know by liking, commenting, subscribing, and hitting the bell so you can always get a notification of when I have a new vi new video. I always try and post on Mondays, um, so always be on the lookout for that. And I will see you all next time. Have a lovely day. Bye!